In this video, I'm going to talk about gluteal versus sham exercises in gradient or pain syndrome. Hi, and welcome back to Physio Tutors. This paper by Ganotin et al. published in 2018 investigated whether it would make a difference to give gluteal specific exercises versus sham exercises in women suffering with gradient or pain pain syndrome. So what did they do? 94 postmenopausal women were included with a confirmed gluteal tendinopathy. Patients who had a local injection in the last 12 weeks, underwent surgery on the affected side, or had any other MSK, neurological or cardiorespiratory condition affecting their ability to participate were excluded. Patients were randomized into either gluteal loading or sham exercises. Education was provided to all participants through a booklet. The information included general gluteal tendinopathy info, such as the nature of tendinopathies, advice on how to sit, sleep and stand with minimal provocation, as well as reassurance to stay active. Here's how the exercise programs differed. The targeted gluteal group performed hip hitches against a wall. Progressions were hip hitches with chair support, toe taps with wall support, and finally forward and backward swings. For quadricep strength, the exercises that were included are the quarter wall squat to half wall squat. And when this was achievable, a set to stand exercise was performed from a high to a low chair. Then finally, one leg was biased over the other by placing it more proximal. Calves were trained by double leg calf raises for press to concentrically double up to toe rise from the unaffected limb and double leg down. Eventually, a single leg calf raise was performed. The sham exercise group, however, performed exercises that were unlikely to load the gluteal tendon sufficiently. Exercises included seated gluteal squeezes, knee extensions in lying and while sitting, standing lateral flexion, seated hip abduction, and seated calf raises. The exercises in both groups were to be performed for 12 weeks, twice daily, targeting two to four sets of five to 15 reps. Possibility for progressions were assessed at four, eight and 12 weeks. A statistical power calculation was made beforehand, which required X amount of participants in order to minimize type two errors, which was sufficiently achieved by the researchers. 23 physiotherapists received training to sufficiently manage the condition according to the trial regulations. Now, the moment most of you have been waiting for, the results. Their primary outcome measure was a Visa-G, which is a patient reported outcome measure for pain and function. Both groups improved equally and there were no differences between groups. The authors investigated a load of secondary outcome measures that we will not discuss as there was not the primary aim of the study and statistical power is lacking. Now, this result might come as a surprise. Maybe education was sufficient. Maybe reps, sets, frequency, intensity, volume, and the types of exercises can be better optimized. Let us know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching.